Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I am going to guide you through getting set up with AWS and being able to set up C9 or Cloud9 using AWS, which is the new way that we have to do it if we want to use Cloud9. So I actually have a walkthrough readme that you can see on my GitHub. The link is up here. We'll also include it in the description for the course or for the resources for the course. Uh, in any event, once you get to this site, then the first thing that you have in the readme is a link for signing up. I'm gonna follow this link here. And it's telling me that AWS accounts include 12 months of free tier access. Okay, so this is going to be 12 months that you get Cloud9 for free. There are some certain usage limits for that free tier. You probably won't reach them unless you're using a ton of resources but you can keep an eye on it and they'll even send you an email saying, hey, you're nearing your usage limits and we're gonna end up charging you next month or something like that. So you can stay on top of it and make sure that you don't get charged. And then at the end of the 12 months, you can cancel if you want or you can sign up if you like. Honestly, by that time, you'll probably have finished the course and you'll be developing locally, so you won't even need Cloud9 anymore, but you can make that decision whenever that time comes. and we'll continue. So now it's asking me some contact information. It wants to know if this is a professional account type or a personal. So I'm gonna select personal. Okay, create account and continue. Okay, it says payment information. Please type your payment information so we can verify your identity. We will not charge you unless your usage limits exceeds the AWS free tier limits. And there's a link here that brings you to the tier limits so you can review those and then the frequently asked questions. So what they'll do is they'll charge your card $1 or $1.30 or some low number and they won't ever complete the charge. They just need to charge it to make sure that you actually own the card, but then it'll get reversed and that money will come back out. I don't even think it ever goes completely through. I think they just charge it and then as it's processing it gets canceled. And we'll see if that goes through. And they're going to call me. Okay, call me now. So using the phone number that I have, they're gonna call me, automated phone call, and I'm just gonna type in this number. Hello. This is an automated call from Amazon Web Services. Using the touchpad on your phone, please enter the four-digit PIN number that was displayed on your screen. I have successfully verified your PIN. Please return to Amazon Web Services. And it's been verified. I'll continue. So they give you an option right away to choose the different plans that you want. We just want the basic plan, so I'll select that. And it says, thank you for creating your account. We're activating your account, which should only take a few minutes. So you will receive an email when this is complete. So I'm gonna sign into the console. So I'm in, click right up here on the right, Cloud9. And I wanna create an environment. If my account is not activated, then it's probably not gonna let me create one. But I'm gonna go ahead and try. So the name, we'll just call it the Web Developer Bootcamp. All right, let's see if that works. Next step. Okay. So they have all these different options and this is where it can get kind of confusing. Just leave it all exactly how it is and then go to the next step. This is a review of everything. So we're gonna click create environment and it's going into the environment. So it's actually allowing me to create the environment. I'm guessing that I'm already activated. So we'll let this get set up for a moment. It can take a couple minutes and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, cool. So my environment is loaded up. It's been connected to Let's take a look at our environment and make sure that we're good to go for the rest of the lectures. This is our terminal down here. You can see that I just kind of drag it up and down. You can arrange these windows in any way you want, but by default they have it where your editor's up top and then your terminal's down at the bottom. So we can close this if we want. That's the welcome note. This little green button right here, the plus sign with the circle around it, you click on that and it gives you options for creating a new file, creating a new terminal. So if you wanted to create a terminal, then you just click that and now we have two terminals open. Okay, so we'll close that one. Go ahead and close it, it's fine. 
click it again, new file. So now we have a new file, it hasn't been saved anywhere. If you save it with file save or save as, or do a command or control S, depending on if you're on Mac or PC, then it'll save it wherever you wanna save it, uh, in the workspace or in a folder in the workspace and so on. So you can write code right here. You can change the spacing over here. Right here where it says text, you can change this to where it highlights specifically what kind of code you're writing. So if you're writing CSS, then you can change it to CSS to get that highlighting. Same for HTML, same for JavaScript, etc. Okay, so that's a new file. We'll go ahead and close that. And no need to save it. So down here in our terminal, this is called a bash terminal. And if you're following along with Colt, his is going to look very similar, except it's going to say workspace right here. Workspace and environment are synonymous. Uh, also up in the top left corner, you can see the name of the environment. I called it the WDB. This folder right here is the same as environment. So see the readme.md file inside of the WDB. If I go down here and run the ls command, and that's just a command to show whatever is in the folder, then you'll see the readme.md file. So you can see the environment is the same as the WDB, and that's your main folder that you're gonna be working from.